The following video recording has been made possible by Symbotic, complete warehouse automation. From integrated supply chain consulting to fully automated picking systems with progressive financial models. Symbotic systems are deployed in major grocery, retail, and general merchandise operations throughout North America. Learn more at Symbonic.com. And by Duchin Productions. Broadcast corporate and web video production services specializing in science and technology. Start the conversation today. Visit DuchinProductions.com to learn how video can get your business the customers, talent, and investors you've been looking for. I'm mostly presenting work from when I was an associate research scientist and postdoc at Disney Research in Pittsburgh on CMU campus. Uh, I've just joined Northeastern, uh, so I'm going to leave both logos up. Also, I noticed in the program, uh, everyone's putting their Twitter handle. Um, I have 13 followers, so <laughs> feel free to jump on board. Actually, uh, some of the videos that I will show, if you go to my uh, Twitter feed, you can uh, dig those up or go to Disney Research, Google, whatever you can find. Um, cool videos. Uh, anyways, next generation of lightweight robotic manipulators. We've seen a lot of people talking about autonomous systems, uh, belief space, how do they interact with the world, understand the world. And my perspective is, from a mechanical engineering and a physics standpoint, boy, how, how can I give you the best possible robot arm that's light, has no friction, gives you a sense, uh, you, have, you have a natural proprioception. How can that enable uh, higher performance autonomous systems? So on that note, in the rest of this talk, there will be no autonomous systems. Um, uh, there's some audio here. Uh, it's not playing through HDMI. That's OK. Um, if you watch the video later, just note that uh, it's very, very quiet. Man behind the curtain. So this is a, a, a physical hardware demonstrator. We're, we're trying to provide an existence, proof, an existence proof for the best possible robot manipulator that we can build. Um, least amount of friction, smoothest motion, highest stiffness, uh, best uh, torque dynamic range, torque bandwidth. So this is picking up an egg. Again, this is done by the operator behind the wall. <laughs> it's a real, it's a real egg. Uh, this is a, this is a great demonstration. Again, actually, the robot is, well, the operator through the robot is looking through the stereo microscope. This is the view on the left through their Oculus Rift, threading a needle. So we can move on the order of a meter, and then we have uh, sub-millimeter positioning. I, I test all of my human-safe robots on my own children. <laughs> uh, Jessica Hodgins at uh, CMU is my supervisor on that project. So what we're, what we're looking at there is a fully mechanically um, remotely teleoperated system. So actually in the arms there are no motors at all, there's no sensors. It's a completely passive system. Uh, so I can build two copies of this and connect it with this uh, clever low friction hydrostatic transmission that's sort of the technology piece behind this. But the original motivation is I want to build really lightweight manipulators. I want to take heavy electric motors, I want to take my harmonic drives out of the arm and put them in the body. And, and how do I do that? And people have been thinking about this for a long time, actually. This is one of my favorite robot arms. Uh, it's very fast, precise. It's doing autonomous throwing and catching here, also some voice recognition. Um, some of you may recognize this, uh, this piece of work. This is actually from 1995. 1995, so this is the MIT WAM arm throwing and catching, and they developed a beautiful system of uh, a cable drive transmission that allows motors to be mounted in the, the base of the robot. And really, the key takeaway here is we're interested in transmissions. How can I, how can I take this heavy motor and, and put it somewhere where I'm not waving it around and, and creating this dangerous, um, this dangerous manipulator? So our ideal transmission would be very light, 
uh, it wouldn't add any friction or damping, uh, and then I could route the degrees of freedom, the joints, um, in, a, in a really flexible way to, to a, a achieve a, an anthrop anthropomorphic uh, manipulation design. So while well, you could start with uh, cable brakes on your bicycle, those are flexible, those can actuate uh, your brakes uh, remotely. They, they have quite a lot of friction, uh, high static friction. And worse than that, as you, as you bend them, uh, more and more you get an exponential rise in friction, the, the so-called capstan equation. Uh, so people have looked at hydrostatic, hydrostatic transmissions. We have hydraulic brakes. We have hydraulic steering on uh, small marine vessels. And so the piece of technology, if you're interested in, in looking more into it, um, that underlies this work is just think about connecting hydraulic cylinders together, sort of one to one. And then the clever part, uh, shout out to Soft Robotics, is we use these uh, soft fiber reinforced diaphragms. It's a continuous seal, so there's no leakage of fluid, and there's no rubbing of an O-ring seal. So the static friction is, is almost zero. Uh, so here's uh, some images of uh, some of these diaphragms. I, I brought a couple with me. If you track me down, uh, I can give you some to, to play around with. Um, and so if you, this is actually a, a commercial off-the-shelf cylinder. Everything we're using now is highly customized and, and uh, we don't use any off-the-shelf parts anymore. So you can see a little bit of the, the rolling action of one of these diaphragms. Uh, there's some other cool things that we do. One of the problems with the wham arm, all these cables need to be pre-tensioned to work properly. Uh, and on the right here, this is an image of the latest configuration we've come up with where we're actually using, it's a pneumatic pre-tensioning system. So these hydraulic lines need to be pre-compressed because you can't apply tension through a hydraulic line. The fluid will cavitate. So we're using a pneumatic preload system. Um, and it's, it's fantastically simple. Um, you don't have springs and going in and tightening things and, and checking that it works properly. You just have a, a pressure regulator. You set the, the set, set the level of pretension you want, and it's applied globally through, throughout the system. Uh, a couple of nerd plots here. We have force bandwidth, so the, the graph on the right in red, that's for the hydraulic system. We actually weren't able to, our test system, we couldn't get out high enough to measure the final 3 dB point. Uh, the latest version would probably have around 100 hertz um, uh, bandwidth for, for um, uh, force bandwidth. And so this, this means the system is haptic, right? It has almost no friction, and it has very, very high force bandwidth. So the operator can actually feel that egg. Um, so we're really excited about applications such as uh, remote manipulation for handling nuclear materials, remote manipulation for surgical devices. We have a project uh, collaborating with Stanford doing transperennial um, remote needle biopsy, it's MRI compatible. So there's no motors, we don't need any ferrous materials. Um, and, a, and a big direction to take this even further, you know, this is, this is one of these actuators, a bunch of these are going into that, that Jimmy, the uh, Disney hydraulic robot. Um, and, and boy, I spent a lot of work really optimizing load paths and structural optimization to make this thing as light as possible. It's lighter than a harmonic drive of equal torque. Um, it's much more powerful than a harmonic drive of equal torque. It's a little bit bulkier, so we need to get the volume down. Um, but it's made out of these metal components, and inside, you know, the thing inside is this little diaphragm. And so how can we turn this system that's really nice and high performance um, into, into something that is lightweight? How do, we, how do we get these heavy aluminum components out of the way? Um, and so there's, there's kind of some really interesting work in thinking about fiber directions and how these diaphragms can be manufactured so we can remove the rigid outer cylinder um, and how can we actually imagine a continuous fiber reinforced structure, right? My hydraulic line has a braided hose, okay? My diaphragm is this, is this braid and fiber reinforced piece of rubber. I want to kind of fuse these together. So I'm imagining orders of magnitude reduction in the future of the mass of these manipulators. So really, really lightweight systems kind of uh, approaching, if you think about nubotics, um, their inflatable arms, uh, trying to achieve very, very low masses, but still have this high stiffness, high precision, um, this, this haptic quality that we lose in an in a inflatable pneumatic system. So these are kind of my takeaways, my, um, my, my vision going forward. I want to build structures where I have fiber-reinforced elements carry tension. Okay, think about composite materials. And I want compressive loads to be carried by efficient rigid structures, that would be a bone, or by incompressible fluids. And then I want to use uh, soft robotic design technology, soft elastomer seals, skins, and flexures to build 
the rest of my structure. And then this concept of pneumatic, pneumatic preloading and using pneumatic springs, um, so maybe a series elastic system that, that doesn't use any metal springs is uh, it's really exciting to me for building this advanced hardware. Um, and so this is my parting challenge to you. When we think about autonomous systems and making them better, let's give pause to think about how can I build the hardware itself to be much lighter, lower friction, where it's now an enabler of autonomy rather than step one, the robot comes in, okay, let me shove this entire system of, of um, you know, mass tensor and, and friction and backlash into this black box and get rid of it and then just work on algorithms. I want the system to be a co-participant and a collaborator in the task of autonomous grasping, okay? Having uh, systems that are proprioceptive and lightweight and, and maintain high precision but allow us to have this tunable impedance, variable impedance operation. Uh, thank you very much.